don't want them to be able to lock Zyra Khan because I actually don't see Clutch doing well with Cody on Caitlyn. He's not a lane dominant player and that's what you need for a pick like that. The Aurelia first pick is really what I think this is all about. The Akali's off, I think DeMonte will be playing that Aurelia mid lane and they're likely gonna try and pair it with Sejuani. Team Liquid have been sitting on this Kench for a long time. Okay, there we go, finally locked in. Going support first and foremost here. Core JJ gonna have plenty of saving power and also the ability to rotate everybody around the map with him using the Abyssal Voyage. Let's see what else TL wanna go with here. First time playing on red side this series. No Zaya, no Sona, double this options. Limited a little bit here, but there's yep. the Sejuani, like you were talking about. It pairs so well with Irelia. Not only is it a good pick, it's a great takeaway. I have to deny it, but that also means that we could see a return of Lyra's jungle Silas if they wanted to get their own version of a Sejuani ultimate. We thought maybe we'd see it last game. I think it would fit quite well here. Or they can just go with something like Jarvan Progress. Also don't need to pick the jungler here. They have plenty right. of options open. Yeah, I mean, if, if you forgo picking jungler first round, though, and then the second rounds of bands come in, yeah, uh, I think it is an easy one, two to hit the Silas and uh, something like the Jarvan to really push them down the tables. <laughs> I mean, no way. <laughs> no way. There it is. This All right. is Rumble left up. It's by far Huni's most played champion, by the way, in season nine uh, coming into this one. 13 games on Rumble, the next closest was four games. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's a pretty good ratio. <laughs> Team Liquid, what's it gonna be here? You know you've already got your jungler and your support. Pretty big front line here for TL. Do they actually wanna go with the LeBlanc or save those solo lanes for later on? Looks like we'll be saving them. They'll pick up both bot laners instead. Varus, Tom Kench will be the bottom lane here for Double Edge Core JJ. And that is a very strong and safe bottom lane to have. Uh, it gives them a lot of options to work with here. Let's see what their answer is going to be for the Huni Rumble, because Clutch have just shown all of their cards really yeah. early on, right? Both solo laners. That is the thing that they had kept in the question mark when they were on red side every single time, trying to save those counter picks, save the flex picks, but they throw them all down here, right yeah, in the opener. Completely different drafts from the teams. I mean, jungle support is already locked in as the first two things for Team Liquid, so they're gonna be throwing out jungle bands. Clutch will be throwing out soul lane bands. And at this point, I think if you're Clutch, I would be trying to ask Hooney what he doesn't want to lane against, but it does seem like Clutch is saying, okay, let's secure the best DeMonte lane we can. Because to your point, Flowers, in the game they won, it was DeMonte going off on Kiana. And if they can yeah. get mid priority, get the side lane pressure for DeMonte, they've shown to find some success. Team Liquid, one more band to go, expecting it to be another jungler. What will the choice be? Looks like it is the Jarvan. So there we go. That's what you're talking about, Kobe. You save the jungler for yeah. second half, the pool gets pinched. Skarner. Yeah, just yeah. Skarner. I mean, it, Lyra plays a lot of Skarner. Silas <laughs> is also still up. Yeah. Um, so they could easily take that Silas once again. Last time we saw it, they controlled so much of the terrain during their team fights with the Silas and the Rumble in combination. It's definitely also a jungler that can help out these solo lanes early. Let's see what they decide to lock in. I mean, Lyra has played so many Skarner games and they really uh, like forcing QSSs, but whenever I see a Tom Kench on the other team, mm. uh, that really deprioritizes it for me. Well, Team Liquid will lock the Silas in for themselves. That could be a flex pick into either mid or top, so it helps alleviate some of what Clutch Gaming might want to do to try to have a counter pick happen here. Does allow Team Liquid to make the most out of their last pick as well, being on red side here in this draft. Uh, da -da 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 Skarner locked in for the side of Clutch Gaming. Uh, no surprises on Skarner. I really like the Silas pick mid against Aurelia. For an odd reason, actually, the AP ratio on Aurelia's ultimate is really high. So uh -huh. you see team fight one shots coming in from <laughs> mid lane Silas. All right, Clutch, what's that support gonna be this time around? Very defensive. All right, yep, it's defensive support versus defensive support here in bottom lane for game four. So much protective capability from both these picks. And there are some insane ultimates for Silas to steal now. You go uh -huh. down the list, these are yeah. all pretty much good. Um, definitely some very, very big team fight options. So it's gonna put a lot of pressure as well in the hands of Jensen. Win lane top if they go with Jace. Second most played champ for impact in the regular season. There we go. 
Team Liquid utilized the Im uh, Impact as a uh, turret pushing Jace as well. Yeah. Impact hasn't uh, been the greatest at using Jace super effectively to get lane leads for himself. And I think that Huni on Rumble, uh, pretty ready for this. We'll see how well he can he can get through the early harassment period, though. Um, definitely Jace and Sidwani is also a pretty good combination. A lot of team fight potential here on both sides with the Varus and the Sejuani and the Silas ulti steal potential on big ults like an Irelia ulti, a Rumble ulti. Skarner's ult is also really good to steal away to make a pick happen. Yeah, and I want to see how well Clutch can press their go button this game because they don't have long range initiation from either the support or the jungle, but they do have the ability to just kind of all pile in yeah. with the Sivir ultimate. It's similar to some of their compositions in the TSM series, which they were able to find fights with, but Team Liquid is a much stronger team. Of course, one of the things that Team Liquid has going for them here as well, up against the main initiation tool of Clutch Gaming, which is that Skarner pull, normally you think of having to pay the QSS tax against suppression. Yeah. But when you've got Tom Kench on your team, Tom Kench can eat someone away from the Skarner pull. Mm -hmm. And that means that if Tom buys a QSS, all of a sudden you're cheating on your taxes. Everybody else doesn't even have to file theirs. All right. Well, they're going to need it because this is a do or die game for Clutch. Must win to keep the series going. And they did try and pull out all the stops in this one, switching sides of the map, changing up their bands, first picking the Aurelia for DeMonte and getting Hooney back onto his most played champion of the year. Here we go. Hooney is on a comfort pick. Lyra is on a comfort pick. Cody's son on something that can hard carry a late game team fight. This looks like a clutch gaming composition to me. If you're going to win game four, I'd be happy with the draft they got. Questions will be, can they stop Team Liquid's early laning power? <laughs> so many teams haven't been able to do that. Look for Doublelift and Core to actually play very aggressive down bottom lane and not let Cody. Silas get snuck off the over the, pat, uh, the back of the Dragon Pit, by the way. He did. Uh, Jensen, can you do anything here? I don't think so. Not yet. Core JJ might look to bait Vulcan out here, but I don't think Minions much more will go down. Stolen. Jensen's still waiting in this brush, still not revealed. Wait for it. <laughs> How long do you wait? For then there's a big reveal as he just walks out of the mid brush. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walks back to mid lane. The anti I was here all along! <laughs> all right, double lifting core JJ potentially might step up here. Lyra moving towards his red. Going. I mean, they can't do a full delayed invade because they have two people talking. They're going to go for it. Oh. Vulcan walks to the brush. He's going to be forced to flash immediately, and Jensen's got the follow up CC. A nice three man stun comes out from DeMonte, and that will get rid of this Team Liquid invade. Jensen loses two thirds of his health. Yeah, so does Vulcan. So we are starting with very big discrepancies in mid lane and bottom lane. Jensen here in the mid lane, uh, it's going to be two charges of the Corrupting Potion behind in the lane versus DeMonte. We'll go a long ways towards helping out the Aurelia here. That was a situation where TL didn't have the numbers advantage, but they did have the element of surprise. So as soon as the Silas popped out of the fog there, Vulcan said, oh no, flashed away, because there could have been a whole team there. Right. So that's the natural reaction if he doesn't want to give up first blood in the elimination game. And I think it ends up being advantage Team Liquid, even though Jensen fell low on health. So a pretty Risky move for TL to make, I think, opting in for a 3v4, but that's the type of stuff you can do when you have a game cushion in a series like this. And really, the determining factor will be, can they punish this Braum with no flash on the bottom half of the map? Yeah. Currently, it's a full red side clear for X Smithy on the top side of the map, uh, you know, looking to attack Huni early on because Rumble auto pushes with the flame spitter. Go. He's already made his way up here. Huni with an early flash to avoid any sort of damage. DeMonte nearly getting himself solo killed in the mid lane, down to 100 HP. But Jensen was the one who was supposed to be low mm. on health. Still popping off in the early lane phase. Silas's early lane is quite strong, uh, especially with DeMonte needing to respect X Smithy here. DeMonte drops the stun, forced to flash away. Nice job there from TL. Yeah, really good coordination. You can see Smithy go right as uh, he walks back from the mid lane there, gets the flash. There are so many openings now on the map. No blood has been drawn, but look at this. No flash on Huni topside. He's also going to have no teleport after 
Uh, Demonte gets back to mid lane. No flash for Demonte. Still Vulcan, no flash as well. So this is basically uh, open season now for X Smithy. He can choose any lane to go to to try and convert. Yeah, the Sejuani early pressure in both solo lanes, securing two flashes compared to Skarner not being able to get out on the map just yet. With Predator as your keystone, when you have no boots, you have no keystone. The Skarner's not exactly threatening. You can't exert that same kind of pressure here as Core JJ tries to make a roam up towards the mid lane, but the control ward placed down in the brush is going to see him, gets immediately cleared though. Still successful though, that control ward had virtually no lifespan and they didn't lose any tangible pressure down in the bottom lane, so right. TL still with pretty strong leaning advantages in mid and bot, and many openings for Smithy to try and take advantage of after this reset. Looney down a little bit on farm here in the top side as well up against this Jace, but that is what you would expect for pretty much anyone into a Jace lane. In fact, you'll have a bit of a wave here to farm up. Speaking of a bit of a wave, Demonte has a lot of minions pushing towards his turret. Got to be careful that he doesn't let himself get low enough the Team Liquid are able to make any kind of a dive happen. Fortunately for him, Nick Smithy is nowhere nearby. He'll just be clearing out the Raptors as Demonte farms up this massive minion wave. And Clutch is really just trying to make it until Lyra's level six. I, I think the most difficult player to keep alive until six is gonna be Hoonan because he's a flashless rumble in a game where X Smithy can mostly gank wherever he wants, knowing that Skarner's gonna be hard farming until level six, so. Look for him to make a return gank up top. Yeah, the situation Lear is in right now is incredibly stressful. You're in the case where you're a jungler, all of your lanes have blown flashes. So yeah. you have to put out fires across the map, try and keep track of X Smithy, uh, and alert your team because it's very difficult to outfight uh, these advantages that Team Liquid got early. And it's much better to use extra information and in tracking to avoid problems. I do gotta say, in solo queue, I'd be much more stressed than in pro because <laughs> they're not gonna understand that a level five Skarner water oh! lane won't matter. He's going for oh! There comes your dive, and Jensen gets the oh. solo kill. It is one for one. Lyra popped the Predator to try to chase him down if he didn't die there, but first blood over to Jensen. That is so critical that the last tower shot has heated up enough damage to be able to finish off that kill. Jensen also flashing in that, uh, and in the end, giving over the extra kill is such a big difference here for Clutch Gaming. This is something for them to hold on to after how hard they were getting pressured early. Look at this trade. Jensen going in, gets him down to just over 200 HP there. Then look at the minions. He goes for the extra AOE on the melee, gets level six, immediately steals and casts the ultimate. Thinks he's gonna be able to heal up enough there with the flash going out as well and the extra potion, but not gonna be the case. And a really nice step back on the stun from Aurelia there too, as Huni just kind of flexes his way out of a gank from Sujuani by going straight for him. But once again, it's Core JJ oh. trying to make plays. He teleported into the top half of the river to come assist in the mid lane. Leon manages to find the pull onto the chase. <laughs> there you go, you buffer the smack with your ulti, and you drag him straight back into the jungle. And it looks so funny, because Skarner can't auto attack after the ultimate is, has been stung, and so he just kind of sits there with the low health yeah, target. You just sit there and you stare at him in your net. You're like, you're going to die as soon as you get out of this. Well, mid lane looks like they're going for Jensen here. Core JJ's on the way, though. Collapse coming in from Team Liquid, and this is not a good place for the side Monte. of Clutch Gaming. But Demonte has so oh. fancy feet. Sejuani nearly killed there. The last bit of damage comes through from Cody's son. Nice stolen ultimate makes its way out from Jensen to stop this from going any further. But damn if Clutch Gaming didn't outplay that one. They are coming up with some plays. Demonte there landing the R, juking up at the start of the fight and making it all the way down back bottom. They have not allowed Core JJ's roams to make a difference in this game. And then Hooney playing so aggressively this entire time, fending off two separate ganks from the sedge, buys time for Lyra to pay him back and get that kill. All right, we gotta have a magnifying glass on Demonte in this replay, because they go in on Jensen, then it's a 3v2. Look how quickly he turns it. Q's to the back line, then ults over, able to get to the low health cannon, as well as got the reset on Core JJ with the ultimate tagging everyone. And when Cody's son comes in, he gets him low enough before he goes into Tom Kench that he can flash over for the extra kill. That was almost a perfect save there from Core JJ, but almost doesn't cut it. And that means money in the clutch gaming pockets. They're up over a thousand now after the course of the past couple of minutes. 
Looking in the jungle, you can see both junglers building towards those Cinder Hulks to be the big meatballs for the front lines. There's so much damage loaded into both of these compositions. Man, we got through three games without this. I was kind of hoping we were going to have a clean series, but unfortunately, a pause has come out. We'll update you all with some information as to the nature and duration of that as soon as we have that info. And the game is at such a pivotal point. 1.2 thousand gold lead for Clutch Gaming. Eight minutes, 37 seconds in. And so far this series, the winner of the early game has killed the enemy Nexus. So this start for Clutch Gaming so pivotal, specifically, I think, Huni and Demonte getting through this early laning phase, allowing Lyra to get level six on Skarner, still have flash on Skarner now, when we have a bunch of flashless soul lanes around the map. Clutch is in the driver's seat right now, actually, if they're looking to try and continue on and force a game five. Yeah, after having to deal with some difficult situations, right? You know, Flash is blown so early on all lanes for Clutch. Huni, Demonte, and Vulcan all yeah. losing theirs very early. Uh, but as you're saying, you know, Huni has actually played quite well up on the top side without his and even set up a very easy kill for Lyra. Yeah, they were in, actually in a very, very difficult spot with how many early flashes that they had burned. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily show up in the scoreboard, but this was an opportunity for TL to take a lot of shots in the early game. And we saw X Smithy multiple gangs top lane, Core JJ basically spent the last five minutes roaming because yep. the bottom lane of Clutch has been completely pushed in. But he actually got nothing done, and that's why Clutch is in the gold lead. I mean, look at when you look at what the inventory was of Demonte before we got into the pause, straight up rushed the Mercury Treads. Instead of going for Trinity Force pieces or a team ad or whatever you would normally see on Irelia, recognized how much effort Team Liquid was putting into camping the mid lane with both Xmithy and Core JJ. And he wanted to respect that. He wanted to be ready for it. And it's what helped him outplay there in the mid lane. Vulcan retaking his seat now on the stage. Hopefully we will be able to get back into game here soon. But Clutch Gaming are looking good here so far in the first eight minutes of play. Yeah, hopefully we're getting back into the game any minute now. Looks Players like are typing ready in the chat. Yeah, this looks like Denson's one of the not. I can see his hands. No, talking. no he's just <laughs> he's just scratching his chin. That's, you can still one-handed type. Okay, while, while scratching your chin, yep. while stretching. All right, we're back in. Game has resumed. Everything's taken care of. Pause over. X Smithy down here in the bottom lane. Has ulti ready to go on the Sejuani. Cody Sun with a nice oh, shield. bell shield. Well done. That's double lift trying to catch him sleeping a little bit there. They're like, ah, we just got out of the pause. Hiya! Yeah. A okay. lot of times right after pauses, players forget the map state. Right? Yep. Oh, this player walked over Ward 30 seconds ago. If that's five minutes ago, you forget that they're actually there. So I think a lot of experienced teams go for plays immediately after pauses. Cody Sun, very aware though, able to spell shield. Well, here comes Lyra in the top side. Huni and Lyra can make a dive onto impact. Lyra has popped the Predator. There comes the Sting. There comes the Rumble ulti, but a good flash away from impact keeps him alive. Jensen TPing means they don't want to stick around to try to finish off this kill. Again, Huni's Rumble is worth playing around. This is getting mm -hmm. so much for Clutch. That burned two summoner spells. You know, Jensen teleporting up to the top side allows Demonte to push in that wave mid lane and now roam around. Smith, he'll go back to picking up the blue buff. Team Liquid just trying to get everybody back to where they need to belong now. Impact has to go back to base, heal up after the gank. Jensen needed to retake his position in mid, running low on mana here on the Silas, but has Biscuits and Corrupting Potion in inventory if necessary. Also going to be handed that blue here in just a moment. Bottom side, Cody Sun matching up to double lift. Has fallen behind by about 20 CS in terms of the farm game being played, but considering his contribution to the mid lane fight that happened earlier and the kill he got, I think yep. they're still pretty even down there. He's able to keep himself in the game, only down 300 gold. Definitely a winning lane for Team Liquid, but Clutch Gaming doesn't really care uh, that that bottom lane is going that way. Their win conditions are completely around Demonte and Huni, and also kind of thinking that Xmithy is going to put a priority towards bottom side. Huni is just playing with so much aggression. Impact will try to return some damage on the back end of this trade. Knows he has Xmithy coming, but a good ward from Clutch Gaming will see Xmithy there at the crux. And Xmithy's fallen really far behind. He's yep. level six, Chalira's level eight right now. Uh, getting spotted out as well. Just there, Squires Bloom from Demonte gets him, and hey, by the way, it's 11 minutes. You know what that means? Clutch is going for oh, Rift Herald. And more surprisingly, 
Vulcan's roaming up for it. This is what they do oh, almost no way. every game. And I think they're just going to get it this time because of the top lane pressure that Hootie's acquired. I mean, you look at a Jace lane, and we've had the conversation many a time before about how Jace is not just expected to win lane, he's expected to do it to a certain degree to justify the pick. Mm -hmm. Well, Impact is not winning the lane, let alone by any sort of a degree. And that makes me wonder how useful he's going to be as the game goes on. Vulcan shows up here in the mid lane looking to protect Demonte from Jensen. Both supports have now reared their heads here in the middle of the map, but that also means nobody's paying attention on TL as Clutch Gaming takes the Rift here. There is a critical trade here that's happening, though, as Xfinity, uh, while they're not going to be able to get that Rift Hail for the influx of money that's so critical in these matches, they do get the break and trade on the, on the bottom side. So Rift Hail is used topside, and it should be completely funneled. Oh, oh Uni almost collapsed on there by Team Liquid in the bottom half of the map. TL knows that Clutch Gaming is investing into this top side with the Mountain Drake they just got. They can put a lot of damage into this tier one in the bottom lane themselves, and that's just what they'll do, forcing I mean, out both ult and flash from Huni. They're gonna take two. I think Huni had cleared the previous wave with his Rumble ultimate. That's why they tried to go all in on him. So he's bought a ton of time. It actually is gonna be first turret and then a two for one, because there's no way TL gets back for yet another turret after killing that bottom one. Impact is just not at a useful state in this game. There's no way he can contest that tier two. It falls before the final plate even goes down in this bottom and lane. Kill. And now Wait. Lyra is doing what That's Skarner does. Do not walk up to Skarner. They could have continued to push if they wanted to be really risky, but they opt not to. Huge series of plays by Clutch, and Huni is actually maybe going to be a little greedy and want to stop this turret take as well. I mean, those plates are doing a good job reinforcing this turret. Who needs a little bit of damage, but Corte J and Doublelift can't fight him underneath the turret. The turret's your second man, and Hooney plus turret greater than Devil and Core. I gotta take a look at how this happened, because no flash from Valera. He just predators. Uh, and okay, Vulcan flash too, but I think he was gonna get him anyways. You yeah. know, that Skarner was, you know, very speedy with the predator buff, and the Chilling Smite comes in. Meanwhile, bottom side, reinforcements have arrived for Hooney. He defended the tower long enough. Wow. Just a sliver of health, but it remains. And that keeps up this big differential in the gold. Clutch have done a very good job at keeping this pace so high and pushing down the two turrets with their Rift Herald. This is why this team prioritizes Rift Herald so frequently, like we saw in summer. We said during the pause, it was about five minutes ago, that Clutch Gaming now with the Skarner who has Flash is in the driver's seat. They're gonna keep going. This could just be for pressure. They get doubled to about half health. Get another play. Plates in the pocket of Clutch Gaming means the gold lead gets bigger and bigger, almost up to 3k. Meanwhile, Lyra's also grabbing the Scuttle Crab while Team Liquid are defending their tier one turret. Hooney's back up in the top side now. He has been relieved of bottom lane duties, and he will keep defending those plates that have now fallen. Demonte versus Jensen here in the mid lane. We saw Jensen winning pretty heavily early on. Farm pretty much dead even. Demonte, no Tiamat on Irelia that we frequently see for the push. Instead, wants to make sure he hits the full power spike of the Trinity Force sooner. Yeah, wants to be able to go for those all ins, get the kill. I have to say, if, if coaching staff are looking at the early game after this one, huge gold stars over to Huni. He's creating yeah. so many uh, different pressure points for Clutch Gaming and really, really performing well. Even though his scoreline looks like 0 0 one yeah. as far as the objectives that he's able to create, pushing out the medium wave, setting up the kill for the Skarner, getting the extra control for them on both opposite sides of the map, uh, it has been a huge, huge cascade and really goes to show why so many teams have banned away this Rumble versus Huni and why he's so confident on it. It was banned against Clutch in 56% of regular season games and basically picked by Huni if it was not banned. Yeah. That's a high priority towards this champion. Just applying pressure over and over. And he's at this point now where it's just a Cinder Hulk Sejuani and it's a Hex Drinker Jace. He can 2v1 those people probably. Yeah. They'll have to send a third if they want to go up there to try and stop Huni and that pressure is worth its weight in gold as Clutch is making moves on the rest of the map. Clutch trying to contest the enemy blue buff. Lyra's doing what you can do ever since they increased the range of the Skarner Spires. You can stand on the very edge of the Spire and still try to take the enemy blue, but Core JJ says, nope, leave us alone. That is our blue. That one goes over to Jensen. Good deny there, coming out from the Catfish as Clutch Gaming still retain control over this bottom side river. Fairly recent change that yeah. allows Tom Kench to steal uh, blue, or sorry, eat 
blue and red buff, possibly, so he could play in the jungle. What it actually is is <laughs> he needs to get secure first. The denial later. button. Nice spire there, Skarner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes Tom Kench and Sendra, there's a few of those champions in the game that are just meant to steal away your hopes and dreams and your buffs, but Lyra's still in a pretty good spot here as this Skarner still has Flash and ulti available, which is such a huge playmaking tool. Remember, nobody on Team Liquid has a QSS yet. They still need to get their core items done. They don't want to set themselves behind to make that early purchase. Well, I do see the No Magic Mantle in the inventory. But that's of not a stash. So he's working on it. He's trying to earn enough money <laughs> for you, Captain Flowers. Not for me. I don't like QSS. That's my least favorite item. It's for you, your Skarner. <laughs> yeah. And with Drake coming up, though, these teams have opted to have different setups. Core J and Double have stayed in bot lane, whereas Cody Sun moved mid to try and get mid lane priority. We're fairly likely to see a fight here towards the Drake, but Hootie has no teleport, whereas Impact does. So it would be very risky for Clutch to actually force onto this cloud drake. Yeah, this should be a setup from Team Liquid. Impact chunking out Hooney as well as having the teleport advantage. Now Smithy's trying to move in, do that setup work. There's still a lot of vision, but they know that they have the extra possibility of bringing impact down. Hootie's walking, though, and Rumble just have to get, you know, halfway across the map to be able to lend his ultimate, at least. Nick Smithy has started up the Drake, but it's going to partially reset here. Now fully reset back into the pit. It goes. Demonte and Lyra both over the wall. The Skarner Spire has not been taken by Clutch. They'll need to capture this first. Gives him a lot of extra speed. And Clutch is daring TL to come in and fight them. Hooney is here. TL tries to funnel it in too much of a choke onto the Equalizer. Here we go. Drake's the name of the game. Clutch, the name of the lead. We'll see if they can secure this objective. Impact coming in from behind. Won't find anything really with the accelerated shot. Goes. Vulcan goes in. Here comes your glacial fissure fight's gonna be starting off. Equalizer down onto multiple people. There it comes. Double is grabbing the kill onto Vulcan. That's gonna be number one. Xfinity escaping down over the wall. Core JJ gonna follow. Double is taken very low. Oh, Double is taken down. Demonte responsible for that one. Lyra will chase the remaining members of Team Liquid away, but it is only one dead on both sides. Did you, <laughs> did you see that sleight of hand from Mahuni? He fakes him out flashing over this wall into the dragon pit instead of the other wall into the jungle and barely got out with 100 HP. I was watching the other side of the fight where <laughs> TL had X Smithy nearly die. Clutch so willing to press the go button. Every time TL tries to flank, Clutch immediately goes in the other direction. So they see Chase, Jace, and they go immediately in with Vulcan onto the equalizer. And watch X Smithy. Bear and Core JJ barely getting out of this as they kill Double Lift. And now, let's see the Hootie thing you're talking about. Yeah. He's in the pit. Whoops, didn't go that way. He went <laughs> over the other wall. <laughs> and somehow the Drake had cooled down. <laughs> I was just expecting the Drake to kill him, but it hadn't hit anyone in long enough that it de aggroed. Pretty fun fight there. You know, two uh, Rumble equalizers also going down due to that being the ultimate Jensen stole at the beginning of it. Yeah. All in all, though, you have to keep track of flashes after the fight like that. With the way this series has gone, with the fights so quickly, one after another. Oh, impact. Oh. Nowhere in nearby. Jensen's going to be burned down Started low. Up. I was Rumble trying to see back up. up. Was looking to see if we were going to get a TPN from impact there, but no way, no how, no sir. And that is an easy pick up there for Clutch Gaming. And Flowers, I love this Clutch Gaming team. They seem to be infused with so much confidence. They've been going and going all split, but it's been getting better and better since the coaching staff changed, since the confidence they gained by beating TSM, the whole regular split. They didn't take a single game off of a top four team. Now they have a 2,000 gold lead on Liquid trying to push towards a game five. And when everybody expected this to be Team Liquid's formality series to make it into finals, remember Clutch Gaming was the organization that for the first time in competitive League of Legends history denied TSM their entry into the semifinals. Mm. They have now taken them down the second time, done that twice now thanks to this year's performance. But this is a team that sort of has a little bit of that reputation already for being able to find the kryptonite of these big, strong powerhouses at the top of the table. And Clutch are definitely putting on a show here for us today. Five and two in this game, still maintaining the lead. We're 20 minutes in, so a big fight that goes one way or the other could mean Baron now. And 
looking at where the gold is distributed, so much of it is on Demonte for Clutch, and also double it for TL, but they're continually no making plays. Clutch Gaming see that this is Jets, and this is not a target that you want to let slip away, and Lyra will make them feel that sting. They burned Jensen's flash earlier, chunking him to 50%, and then him failing his E over the wall. So he has nothing to get out of it this time around. Clutch repeatedly focusing here. And this time around, they're able to transfer this into an objective. Look at the state of the map. They've just killed a solo laner. They have both sides pushing. And mid lane here, double lift Core JJ trying to defend. Uni will take down the third Team Liquid turret of the game now. Those two in the top lane, that one here on the bottom side, they still have to siege up around this mid lane tier one. But Lyra's prowling around. He has going. the flash, he has the ulti, and Clutch Gaming are going in. It's a stun on a core, JJ, but it could be turned around now. Jensen with a decent ult going away there, trying to find something that he's able to do. Impact TP's into the fight, Vulcan's gonna be taken low. Uni off to the side, trying to deal with Jensen right now. Neither side gonna grab a kill. Disengage from Clutch Gaming. Strong defense there by Core JJ and Doublelift. And we have done so much to talk about what Clutch is doing because they've really been putting the pressure on Team Liquid. But I want to take a moment to think about what TL can do to fight back in this game because they right. don't have pressure in their waves and they actually have to find initiations. I feel like if TL can find a way to collapse on Huni with how aggressively he is playing, that'll be their biggest gain. TL spent the first 17 minutes with Doublelift and Core JJ bottom lane because they could never break that turret. Now that they're more set up into a standard 1-3-1, they can maybe look to get some windows into the side lane since Doublelift is so strong and it might let them get some push mid. And as we're talking about what could be a win condition or how, for, how a team might be able to find a pick or get themselves further ahead or catch up in this game, Two big things I need to point out right now. QSS in the inventory of Core JJ, as yep. we were expecting, that's gonna help him gobble people up, keep himself safe. Lyra has the other QSS in this game. Skarner's only ability to make plays is to run at you, albeit very fast. QSS is one of the most important tools for not getting stopped by a chain of corruption or a Sejuani ult. All right, once again, we have to get in the current game state here. The teleports are down for Team Liquid after their last play, so Clutch should spread out once again and try and use the extra teleport advantage here to gain that map pressure. Yeah. Uh, the advantage should be theirs in setting up the next play. Basically, you try and push in on these side waves, and then you're able to get that collapse. The turret left standing in the mid lane here is already very, very low and should not be defensible when you have the double teleport advantage to you. Even if the other team has Tom Kench, this is level one ultimate still. He's only level 10 right now. That is not a very long range. Clutch Gaming pushing up on the Tier 1 now. Huni coming in from the side. Lyra wants oh. to try to make a pull happen, but he doesn't go after Core JJ because he knows the QSS is there. Small thing that happened in the top side, though. Doublet used Blade of the Ruin King on Huni to slow him down, fired his ultimate, and burned Huni's flash. So the next time they try and set up that 1-3-1, he's now a more viable target to try and collapse on. Still no Hourglass completed for Huni either. You can see the inventory. He's got the pieces of it, along with the Leandri's Torment that has been completed. But considering he doesn't have the stopwatch part, that means no stasis. You get caught, you're going down. All right, 16 seconds left on the Cloud Drake here. This should theoretically be a Clutch Gaming easy Dragon pickup yeah. for themselves. They already have control wards leading up to the Dragon. Team Liquid just had to reset after trying to defend mid. So this should be a fairly easy second Cloud Drake. They already have Lyra taking care of that one on his own. Very easy for Skarner to solo these down. A little bit time consuming, but considering you aren't really pressured right now by Team Liquid, you've got the push in both mid and bottom lanes. You can see Huni coming over, Cody Sun doing the same just to make sure they take this one down in a timely manner. And that is Cloud Drake number two over to the side of Clutch Gaming. Okay, next step, move your vision over to Baron. Clutch Gaming still have the teleport advantage for another two minutes here. So if they can continue to have the bottom side pushed in once again, they move everyone else over to get vision around Baron, they will force more errors from yeah. Team Liquid. And I like what Team Liquid did while conceding the Cloud Drake, getting the Scuttle Crab, which is the vision you can't clear and get control over while they have that vision shrine active. So TL will continue to try and keep tabs on their waves, but Looking at the overall game state, Cody Sun getting that third item is a massive power spike for Clutch Gaming. For the 
20 or 30 CS disadvantage they were facing in lane, they've been giving him access to enough farm that he's actually at a very fed point right now. He's actually got 700 more gold than double. All right, they had some pings on a hard force here from Team Liquid. Team Liquid could be in trouble. The Equalizer's already gonna be called down. Core JJ's nearly gonna be killed, and now that Smithy is grabbed in the Skarner Ultimate. Chains of Corruption find their way onto the Clutch Gaming members. Jensen to the back line. Oh, 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 my. My. And that is how you carry a team. That is how you earn your place. Jensen rends him in half. What in the world happened in that cluster? Jensen just AOE'd the entire squad. Impact also had an empowered shock blast over the wall that hit four people at the same time. Such a cluster, which you would expect would favor the Equalizer team. But we're gonna have to watch that back one more time to see just how all the damage came down. So as it starts, X Smithy buys a lot of time with his initial stopwatch. Because look at where Impact is on Jace. He's so far away from the fight at the start. And Clutch actually wanted to fight that. They saw pings on Impact there. Then here's the big grouping. Double lift firing away from the backside. His boom, arrow. Boom, boom. And the shock blast. That is <laughs> two skill shots landing. Double lift hits the fully charged up Varus arrow. Probably activated the W for it as well. Yeah. Along with an empowered shock blast from Impact. So the snipers on the side of Team Liquid. It yeah. was the Varus. The Jace yeah. helped a little bit at the end, but everyone was already dead by the time that shock blast landed. And Jensen there with the 3.5 as well, being yeah. the front line that actually grouped them all up. I mean, Jensen, his role there was obvious. I didn't realize quite how strong the arrow was, but double if right as we're talking about how Cody's son hit this three item point and he's so powerful now in this game, Double if shows just how relevant he is as well. With that fight, Team Liquid closed this game back down to one and a half thousand gold as a difference between the teams. They gained some momentum for themselves and they show Clutch Gaming that this isn't just a one-sided game. Yeah, so the W active that I'm talking about for Varus, the uh, Blighted Quiver, which was yeah. a change of quite a long time ago, um, adds the 14 to 21% of the target's mission. Oh, oh, there you go. That's the kind of pull you need. Impact's taking down. <laughs> Shutdown credit over to Cody Sun. All right, Cody Sun and Lyra add 100% to your missing health for Impact. And that is going to be a power play now on the side of Clutch Game. They're still ahead in gold, even after that big uh, resurgence from Team Liquid. I can feel it, Kobe. I was ready to talk all about the active on Varus' W. A lot of people never even press that button. You can press it before your Q charge to do a bunch of damage. Anyway, Baron setup is now the name of the game from Clutch Gaming. Huni actually burns his ultimate early on in that top lane fight. Probably didn't think he could 1v1 Jensen and he just used to scare him off. But that alone, since Jensen now has Equalizer at level 16 no less, will push Clutch off of Baron despite Impact being dead on Jace. Jensen, very scary on this Silas. Proto Belt, Luden's Echo, and Hourglass all up and running for this guy. Could be that X factor that they need in the upcoming team fights. Lyra now leading the charge here for Clutch Gaming, moving into enemy territory. They'll find the Smithy, but nobody else. We learned in the last team fight that's not the guy you can initiate on. Demonte not going to land the stuns there, coming out from the Irelia, but Clutch Gaming will back away. Team Liquid retain enough control over their jungle to give the red off to double lift, as Clutch Gaming will continue trying to set up around this Baron pit. Meanwhile, Huni trying to deal with bottom side. He'll sweep out this ward, take it down. Jensen sees no reason to really deal with him right now. He'll instead just get back to base, use his chance to reset. Such a great game four we have in this series. Clutch Gaming with the chance to push Team Liquid to a game five. If Team Liquid wins, gives them a chance to be in their fourth consecutive LCS final going towards yeah. their fourth consecutive LCS championship, which would be something no other NALCS team has done before, but they have to be in the moment right now. Clutch can't be thinking that they're massive underdogs, that Team Liquid has consistently beaten everyone else. They have to think, what's the next play? It's probably right. around the Drake setup and trying to find a fight in a choke point. It would be cloud three for the side of Clutch Gaming, which as we mentioned earlier, your two big ways of initiating are dogpile with Sivir ultimate or have Skarner go in and pull someone. Cloud Drakes do wonders for both of those strategies. It could help a lot if Clutch Lane. Here, all three of those. But now we're going in, and Double is going to be the target. Core JJ keeps him alive, but more damage is going to be coming oh, through. Got him. There's the pull of the double lift. There's your team fight. Team Liquid are shredded. They might continue to push this through if they could have killed Impact and Jensen. That is definitely going to be Baron here for Clutch Gaming. They finish up the turret. 
What a flank by Hooney's Rumble. He heads around the backside of the fight, lays down the equalizer, comes in with Flame Spitter to corral four members of Team Liquid, and their reward is going to be a Baron, which will propel them towards a game five. That is why Hooney's Rumble is banned so often. He initiates with it like no other, and Clutch love this combo. Equalizer in the back, everyone else in Sivir coming up the front. So you can't run away from the damage. The Equalizer perfectly placed. They're mostly trapped on it. Core JJ burns. And then after they get spat out, Sivir and Aurelia arrive. And I got to give credit to Vulcan in this too. He jumps forward to a minion, then flashes forward further to get the point blank initiation with the ultimate. Hooney's damage looks impressive, but it's important to note the support efforts that go in to making that team fight really sing. We saw this in a successful series that Clutch had versus TSM, controlling the areas within these team fights. So many avenues have been taken away from their opponents by these zone control ultimates that they're able to bring. And with the extra speed, everyone gets in place. They make it count. Now with Baron plus the third Cloud Drake for themselves, they come headed for those turrets. On the top side, actually we have a 1v1. Demonte versus Impact. Not gonna be a 1v1 for long. TP coming in from the side of Team Liquid brings both double lift oh. and Jensen. They all left the base uh, open. Question mark, what? ping, question mark, ping, question mark, ping, question mark, ping, question mark, ping. Gotta get back. Clutch Gaming are now making their way onto the bottom side inhibitor turret. X Smithy and Core JJ oh, are no. not the two that can defend this alone. Clutch Gaming have the push. What the hell? With your base is <laughs> open to a Baron Dump team and he spent two teleports up the to help out Impact, that is, that's uh, Inhibitor is gone, all right. Inhibitor down, Xfinity under pressure. Vulcan looking to grab the last couple of hits there onto those Winter's Bite stacks, but it's not gonna do much. Double up is down, oh. nearly killed off, they but Core JJ with a clutch save there with a the Devour. That means Double Lift lives to see another day. But it's also going to be probably the second inhibitor. It'll be a, maybe a very small window for TL to engage when Double Lift comes back here. But that's all Team Liquid can hope on. Jensen has Equalizer stolen. Clutch Gaming have to notice that. Respect it. Double Lift making his way back towards the fight here. All right, just TL go. One more shot comes out from the cannon minion to stop that turret from being there any longer and getting in their way. Clutch Gaming now looking at inhibitor number two. Bottom lane's already pumping out those super minions. Accelerated Shock Blast only finds Vulcan. That's not really a target that's going to have meaningful impact on. Jensen's still off in the flank. Clutch Gaming have a ward on his position. They know he wants to come in from the side here, but only Hooney can make the rumble flank happen like that. The Lear ricochets. is still prowling around. More damage coming through. Second inhibitor falls. The Ricochets did so much ambient damage to Team Liquid that they could never find the angle onto Clutch Gaming. So. I can understand the thought. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting bamboozled. I can understand it. So, hear me out. Okay. When a team has Baron, they're always trying to set up a 1-3-1. Yes. One way you stop that is kill the split pusher before the fight happens. Yes. You do not teleport your whole team towards the split pusher. They're already at your base on your inhibitor. <laughs> so, I mean, are you going to be okay, buddy? You idea, seem a little stressed out over there. The idea is to kill him. No, no, no. <laughs> the execution may have been a little lacking. You know what? No man left behind. They value, I think, uh, uh, Impact's life very highly. Ooh. All right, well, they valued it more than they valued two inhibitors, which are now down. Clutch Gaming, they have no time left in the Baron power play. It times out just shy of 3,000 gold. And Clutch will now have to push onto this third lane of inhibitors without it. Lyra pops the Righteous Glory. Cody's going to go ahead and use the On the Hunt as well. Clutch won't get a whole lot from it, though, just yet. You need to wait on those other two lanes to apply the pressure automatically with the super minions before they try to put the last few hits into this remaining inhibitor turret. All right, super minions are not going to wait around either, Flowers. There's only one more line of defense left for Team Liquid. Clutch are actually moving in. Jensen has the Irelia ultimate stolen. He fires it off onto Vulcan, who uses his cleanse to break Smithy's ulti. Team Liquid have tried to initiate, but they're not able to find a ton just yet. Hooney drops the Equalizer as a counterattack. Impact, half HP, Vulcan nearly dead. Both sides hurting a little bit. Team Liquid also has to respond to the push from the Super Minions. That's what I'm talking about. You ignore those, you will lose Nexus turrets. The first one of which is already almost dead. Impact will try to deal with it. 
Remaining tier three still under pressure here. Clutch Gaming not willing to surrender the push. Core JJ is going to find himself full, taken very low. Thick Skin going to be keeping him alive. Stasis from Hooney prevents him from falling as well. And Clutch Gaming will finally be pushed back. Clutch playing a pretty dangerous game. They're trying to get that inhibitor turret. They do end up getting one more because there were no immediate objectives up. They were basically just buying time until the next stage of the game will progress. Exactly. Their eyes are on that timer for the Elder Dragon. 40 seconds left on that spawn. They cannot afford to make a mistake yeah. at Team Liquid's base with that big of a reward for Team Liquid to take off of their mistake. So they they cut their losses right there. And they're like, you know what? We are not getting this inhibitor turret right now. It's much better to set up 40 seconds ahead of time at the Elder Dragon. There's no way that Team Liquid should be able to deny them this. They have full control. They still have the super minions that will be allowing them extra pressure through middle and bottom lane. And you can see them already. All these wards on the pathways leading up. Garner heading down there to start. Boomerang finds plenty of damage onto the team. Liquid oh. and now we're going to go in. Glacial Fissure plus the Equalizer surely spells doom for Team Liquid. Cody Stunts grabbing the first. Jensen goes into Stasis. Double lift goes into the dirt. It's a double for Cody. And Clutch Gaming will take it all the way home. And that's their spot with Rumble Shiver. You're in the mid lane. They're coming for you. Clutch Gaming send it to game five. Play the Silver Scrapes. I doubt many imagined to see this series go to the fifth game, but Clutch Gaming are proving they came here to play today, making it happen on signature picks. It was Kiana for Demonte in game two. It is Hooney with the Rumble in game four. This team is fun to watch. Let me uh, bring you back to the analyst desk uh, when they were discussing pick ban coming into it, and they were okay. going right. over the must bans versus yeah. Clutch Gaming. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. with recent information, okay. Right, time Kiana, <laughs> definitely ban that. Rumble, definitely ban that. GP, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, they yeah. can let that one through. Well, the Rumble got through, so that's <laughs> yeah. back on the list here. Uh, I mean, Hooney, once again, you see the Rumble Ultimate in that last fight, lines it up on everyone. So many of these big game-changing moments were made by him, but also the setup work in this game, the early lane yeah. phase, the minion wave pushing that he's able to get with that. I'm all about the adaptation that's happened in this series. I mean, going away from the red side for Clutch Gaming, reprioritizing their bans and their picks, and every time a team has lost a game in this series, they've won the next one. So both coaching <laughs> staffs are doing it's a lot so fun. to come back at it. One, Follow one, the pattern. One, one. Follow yeah. the pattern, you'd see what happens. But Clutch Gaming made a great series out of this. Back and forth, back and forth. We are going to game number five. And now State Farm Analyst Desk, do me a favor. Tell me, how did this happen? <laughs> we are going to game five. Captain Flowers, I'll see if we can tell you exactly how this happens, because for most, this is a rather unexpected situation to be in. A 2-2 scoreline where Clutch has just forced our three-time champions yep. into, into match point. Clutch has by far the mental advantage in this series. It is so obvious in the way that they are playing, the confidence at which they take fights. And Team Liquid, that last double TP to the top lane, what is going on in their heads? <laughs> yeah. That, to me, was the sign that something is wrong. And yeah. to be fair, all the pressure. You're on the road to the 4 P, and suddenly, Clutch Gaming, the team that was at the start of this play, like last place, is now breaking you to game yeah. five. And the cast we were talking about a little bit, this is obviously way too reductive for everything going on in the series, but... The Rumble got through and they won a game. Ah, what, about game what about game two? Yeah. The Kiana was played and they won a game. Yeah. It's obviously not going to break down to just those are their comfort picks, but you can just tell how good Clutch is when they get the picks that they want, and it feels like so much more important than anything else. Yeah, for them it's obviously important to get the, uh, like, the picks that they want, but I like if you leave them open, at least have a plan around them, but you draft a comp that has zero mobility whatsoever, they can't really escape the Rumble load, and you're just playing against it. Like If it's open, please draft against it properly. Yeah, and you heard what Jet said there near the end. If they find you in the mid lane with a Sivir and a Rumble, they will chase you down, and to your point of no mobility, you have no options. Right, if you have the Braum, you can kind of drop it, hop back, run away, but they have the Tom Kench who like eats the- <laughs> And a Varus, <laughs> the Varus right? <laughs> Stands there with him in his mouth, and he's like, where am I putting him? <laughs> where do I go? Like, 
you the fire. Yeah. yeah, you really did see how tough it was for TL to navigate this game, but also, as you mentioned, the confidence of the Clutch Gaming players when they do get some of those champions that they long for here on the Rift. This was one of the early trades in the mid lane. There was a lot of action between the two uh, teams here in this lane, the one-for-one -one trade to kick things That's off. That's a great trade because Demont had lost his flash on his own merit before, so trading one-for-one -one against a guy that you had a summoner spell down is a pretty nice step up. And that's another repeal of mistake right here. Like, we, we saw it earlier, like, I think it was game two, where uh, TL fought, fought on enemy's bot lane prior, and this happened again, where they actually lose a final mid lane simply because the bot lane of the enemy team is arriving earlier. Yeah, that was just staying pushing. That's the power you get when you lock in the Sivir, right? We wanted Clutch Gaming to pick supports that had more value in the bottom lane that allow both members to roam up to the mid lane, to roam up to the junglers, and they did it. It executed even better. That said, uh, the early game, mid game, there's still some back and forth between the teams and we even had one very exciting fight around the dragon. When it comes to finding the support you need to take the reigning champions to a game five, sometimes hope, uh, you hope it comes from your biggest fans or your family. But then there are the neutral objectives who don't do a thing just to say I'm helping, presented by State Farm. In game four, Cloud Drake lets Huni escape in tip top shape. Let's take a look. Double is grabbing the kill onto Vulcan. That's gonna be number one. Xfinity escaping down over the wall. Core JJ gonna follow. Double is taken very low. Double is taken down. They win, they win. They're going. They're in the fight. They're very scared. Fast, low flash. Go there. And they have Huni. And they have Huni. Huni side. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no, I don't know about tip top shape, <laughs> but they did let him out. He, yeah. he barely made in it. In shape. In some form in of some shape. Form of shape. But yeah, the Cloud Drake was just like, oh, I could one hit that guy. Right. No, yeah, no, 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 one, no one's no, touched no, no. me in five no, seconds, no. so I'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> the patience on the dragon there. Uh, that was a very fun fight to watch, but what I want to look at is where it all went right for Clutch Gaming in the mid lane. Let's take a look at how those late game fights played out. Big Hooney Rumble Ultimate coming in here to kick things off, along with Vulcan. We can't ignore yeah. Vulcan in this they play. They are so good at coordinating how quickly they're able to use their ultimates. It's just everybody go at the same time, and you see that they're all kind of lined up in different angles as well, so it makes it a lot harder for Team Liquid to retreat. Yeah, and the amount of stagger that engages that they have, like you don't just have the bomb engage, you don't just have the rumble engage, you also have the Sivir, you have the Skarner, so there's so much follow-up to actually, they're actually engaged, and there's no way for Tier to escape, especially with the comp that they have. And it's one of the things that has improved for Clutch Gaming with the addition of their extra coaching staff. They've been run, running Rumble all split long, but they would pair with like Lee Sins and this stuff that oh, didn't yeah. really work. A hard day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, and so, now it's like press R all together, and you have so many multiple forms of engage, like you're saying, that like the Rumble all does, that one was perfect. They don't all need to be perfect. You can still find fights once you get ahead with good Rumble ults, not perfect ones. It's my favorite time of every best of five, where we go into game five and we have side selection. TL will go back to blue. I don't Shocker. think that's going to surprise anyone. Uh, the casters called it out. Each team that's lost has come back to win. That's how we've gotten to our fifth and final game for the reigning champions. What's the recipe to success? They do, they've bought themselves some bands from the blue side, I believe. For Team Liquid success. Yes, we're starting from Team Liquid. How yeah. do they, because uh, you, you called out the mental advantage for Clutch, and we'll get to them in just a moment, but I want to start with Team Liquid. Ben Rummel, <laughs> Ben Kiana, and then start the game from there. Like, <laughs> May, May first, pick, like, that, that's how it is. I honestly don't think that they have to change up too much to uh, their blue side picks so far. I think it's more about like getting, obviously, the Akali, ideally. If they don't get that, then um, I think Honestly, just get stable soul lanes and play for bot prior, and I think that's how you win the game. I'll add yeah. one more thing to that. I, just like yesterday in CLG series, where Biofrost was stuck on TK, I don't want to see more Town Kench for oh, Corey please. JJ. I know regular season, it's fine, but when it comes to having a guy that's making a run for MVP candidate, the last thing I want to see is him being on Devour duty. I want him on the playmaker. All right, fair enough. Any Anything else to add in there from the TL, uh, TL side, Mark? Not much for TL. When All I'm right, looking, hit me with clutches. Yeah, when I'm looking at clutches, I actually think they don't have that much flexibility in the first phase. I'm concerned about Jensen. Uh, he had a pretty bad game there. Uh, mm -hmm. and DeMonte was able to hold even. But on the Akali games, Jensen has been fantastic. If you're not going to get the Kiana, what's your answer? Like, do you actually drop a Sona ban and, and say, like, yes, TL, you've played a ton of Sona, Tom Kench. You're really good at it. You're one of the best teams in the world at it. But you got to play it now for the first time in game five. Like, is that something you're willing to risk? It's, right. it's yeah. a huge danger, but it does remove bot lane priority because it does not win. So you can at least use Cody to push and do some more stuff. No, I would say, I would say just leave it open and see what TL does with it. Even the game that we played in the regular season against them, it wasn't like they were that perfect at the execution of it. And especially the bot bio that you lose 
has been so important this series. So mm -hmm. I think give them the sauna and then play around it. I think this is the time for Clutch to just ump or up the up the ante here and go even more aggressive early. Just double down on these very early five man plays wherever it is, just to continue that mind game advantage that they have right now because clearly they are the ones deciding the pace of the game and if they can just let Team Liquid know we're going to do it in game five as well to make sure that you don't come back, it's going to go a long way. Help me understand uh, the gravity of this matchup. If Clutch were to take game five, what what level of upset are we looking at here? Is this one of the greatest upsets one, in oh, LCS yeah, yeah. history? Probably the greatest upset of all time, if they're able to do it. You're talking about the three-time reigning champions who went to MSI Finals just a couple of months ago. Yeah. They're on the four-peat track, finishing first in the regular season. You have mm -hmm. the team that finished 10th last split, rallying all the way to potentially going to a Finals. I think what makes it an even crazier upset is that With you. in a lot of the other upsets that we have had that have been crazy, the other team has never been that down before and when they started this season. Clutch Gaming's beginning of this season like, what? They were bottom of the barrel. They, right. It made no sense to predict that at the start they would end up being a team that takes down Team Liquid, which I think they're going to do it. It's the whole arc. DC, you think they're going to do it? I think they're going to do it. Oh, oh my. I'll doing. throw it out there that mm. uh, in the, in the pre-series predictions, Amazing was the only one of the four that we had that predicted a five-game series. Still said it would go TL's way, but did call the 3-2. How do you feel about we'll that see. now? Yeah, do you, who do, you, do you still give the edge to TL here? I think because they're going back to Bruce said, yeah, I do. Okay, fair enough. There you have it. Everything's on the line here in game five. Clutch have pushed us to that fifth and final game. Will they